Hello, welcome back. Today's lesson talks about the order of operations. Hopefully you have your guided student notes ready so that you can follow along. So let's begin. Order of operations is going to be really important for us as we start learning to evaluate formulas or create formulas of our own, perhaps inside of a spreadsheet. Let's see what we have. You might remember the commutative property of addition that says you can add numbers in any order. For example, 5 plus 3 gives you exactly the same thing as 3 plus 5. If we wanted to use the commutative property of addition to rewrite a larger expression, like 8 plus 12 divided by 4, the first thing we need to do is identify the add-ends, the things being added. So we're adding 8 to 12 divided by 4. And the commutative property says that we can rewrite this. We can change the order of the add-ends. Oops, that's a little sloppy. We're supposed to get the same result if we do this. Right? Changing the order in which you add numbers is not supposed to alter the result. Let's see what happens. We have 8 plus 12 divided by 4. 8 plus 12 is 20. Dividing by 4 gives us 5. If we had 12 divided by 4 plus 8, 12 divided by 4 is 3, plus 8 is 11. And something is clearly wrong here. What is it? Did we do something illegal by rearranging this problem? Well, I don't know. Let's check. Uh, let's work with our calculator. If we had 8 plus 12 divided by 4, calculator says, oh, the answer is 11, and we got 5, so something is definitely wrong, not with the way the problem was written, but with the way that we worked the problem. Apparently, you can't just go left to right. All right, so let's cross this off because we don't want bad things to stay in our field of view and slide down a little bit. You already know what the meaning of the word evaluate is, but we'll do this again anyway. It means to find a value for. So we can evaluate an expression. We can figure out what it's worth. You might not know what a mathematical operation is. And in easy speak, a mathematical operation is something that is done to a number or numbers. probably get better if I give you some examples. So you can add numbers. Adding is an operation. You can subtract numbers. You can divide numbers. You can raise them to a power. All of these are examples of mathematical operations. Operations is uh, perhaps an interesting choice of words, but it helps out with the next analogy. We've already discovered that you can't just evaluate an expression from left to right. For some reason, the calculator here was performing the division first. The calculator seems to think that division has a higher priority than addition, which it does. So imagine that you are in the emergency room of a hospital. There is a whole line of people waiting to be seen. Everybody has checked in. The nurses know what is wrong with all of the people in line. Does the first person in line get seen first? No, absolutely not. The person with the most serious injury or illness gets seen first. The person with a higher priority gets seen first, no matter where they happen to be in line. Of course, if a couple of people have an ailment with the same priority level, then the first person in line will get seen first. It's the same way with mathematical operations. So what we need to do is learn the priority levels or the priority list for the different things that we can do. So here we go. What is top priority when we see an expression? Top priority are parentheses. And parentheses is probably just a shortest way to write what we really mean. We mean parentheses and other grouping symbols. So 
So you might see brackets, you might see braces. There are other types of grouping symbols as well. There are also invisible parentheses. I know, sounds sneaky already, doesn't it? Invisible parentheses group numerators. They group a denominator. Oops. And they also group anything that's held underneath a radical, which of course you know is called the radicand. It's pretty hard to take the square root of something if you don't know what the value of the something is first. All right, after that, we look at exponents and roots. Exponents and roots have exactly the same priority level, so we look for these at the same time. And after we've identified them, we do whichever one comes in line first, right? The one on the left. The same thing is true for multiplication and division. We look for these at the same time. And then we do whichever is on the left first. And finally, we get down to the lowest priority of all, which is addition and subtraction. By the time we get down to this level, that's usually all that's left. But still, we look for these at the same time. Addition is not ahead of subtraction. Since they have the same priority level, we do whichever is on the left first. So how are we supposed to remember this priority list? Well, there are a couple of ways. Um, as a memory aid, we could use the first letters from each of the levels. For example, we could have P for parentheses, E and R for exponents and roots, M and D for multiplication and division, and finally A, S for addition and subtraction. Uh, permdis, well, it's not really a word, but it sounds like something, so maybe just saying permdis helps you remember. The thing about looking at it this way is we sort of lose track of what has the same level as something else. So if you're going to use this, remember it with some circles. Right? E and R have the same priority level, so we need to look for them at the same time. Exponents don't get attended to before roots multiplications don't get attended to before divisions. Things that have the same priority level are identified together, and then whatever comes first in the list gets done first. The other thing you might do is use a sentence or a phrase that starts off with the letters that you need. Uh, for example, something like, um, oh, let's see, Prince Eric Prince Eric's uh, recipe makes a dozen apple um, sandwiches. 
You, of course, can make up your own sentence. Whatever helps you remember the order of operations. Right? P for parentheses, E exponents are roots, M multiply, D divide, A add, S for subtract. But just like before, do something that helps you remember what operations have the same priority level. All right, so let's go back to the problem we had at the beginning of this lesson. We were looking at 8 plus 12 divided by 4. Now we know that division has a higher priority than addition. So we would say 12 divided by 4 is 3, and then add in the 8. And of course the answer is 11, and that's exactly what your calculator did as well. Let's check out something a little more complicated. On to the next page. All right, so this expression is kind of long. 120 divided by 4 times 5 minus the square root of 49 plus 8 squared. And we're going through our order of operations, and the first thing we do is look for some parentheses. And we see them. But the parentheses aren't holding anything together. These parentheses are just here to indicate a multiplication. So when we talk about parentheses with the order of operation, we're looking for parentheses that are used as grouping symbols. The job is to work inside them. If there's nothing to do inside the parentheses, then we're done. So even though there are parentheses here with the 4 and the 5, we're not going to do this multiplication first because there's nothing to do inside the 4 set of parentheses or inside the 5 set of parentheses. All right, parentheses are done. The next thing we do is go through and look for exponents and roots. We have one of each. I have a square root of 49. I have a square root of 8. I have an 8 squared. What should I do first? Well, exponents and roots have the same priority level, so we start with the one that is on the left. Square root of 49 is 7. After that, bring everything else straight down. For right now, we are working to demonstrate order, which means we show what happens first, what happens second, what happens third, and we can't do that if we have multiple steps happening in a line. All right, so let's check out the result. Still looking for exponents and roots. Aha, uh -huh. we have an exponent here. 8 squared is 64. We'll bring everything else straight down. Any more exponents and roots to do? No, those are done. Moving on to multiplications and divisions. I have one of each, 120 divided by 4, and 4 times 5. They have the same priority level, so when we de decide which one is going to be done first, we say, start with the one on the left. So just because m comes before d in permdis doesn't mean multiplications get done before divisions. Remember those circles. 120 divided by 4 is 30. And then we just recopy the rest of the problem. Multiplication is done before addition and subtraction. 30 times 5 is 150. Recopy the rest of the problem. All right, now we are down to the lowest priority level, addition and subtraction. Which one gets done first? Yes, the one on the left. 150 minus 7 is 143. Don't race to the end. I know, it's hard to keep yourself so that you're only doing one thing per line. But finally, 143 plus 64, let's see, 3 plus 4 is 7, 6 plus 4 is 10, carry the 1, 270. Can the calculator handle something like this? Well, of course it can. So let's see what happens here. 120 divided by 4 times 5. The calculator knows that parentheses next to each other mean multiplication, so you don't need to tell it. Minus 
square root we access with the second key, 49 plus, oh, wait a minute, we don't want that plus underneath the radical, do we? So use our back arrow, delete that plus, and use the right arrow to come out of the square root, plus 8 squared. So you want to make sure that what you're typing in looks like what you have on the paper. This was a pretty long expression. There is an arrow over here telling you that there's more stuff. So if for some reason you might need to come back and change something that you wrote, you can use your left arrow to see the beginning portion of your expression. All right, here we go. Press enter. Oh, good. Same answer twice. Woohoo! Well, you know, it's important to be able to work your calculator well also. If you can only do tiny little one-step things on your calculator, what, what good is that? Okay. Do we have to do everything one step at a time on paper? Well, no. Um, I won't kid you about that. But for right now, we're learning order. Later on, we can learn about the shortcuts. If you are going to be someday making your own formulas on a spreadsheet, perhaps you're going to be calculating the cost of a job, or paying your employees, you'll need to be able to put in your own formulas. And in order to do that, we have to really understand order of operations well. Besides that, when it comes time for your next test or quiz, I want to know that you know the order. And so the only way to show me what comes first or what comes second is to do one step at a time. All right, let's do another one here. Let's scroll up. Here we have a fraction with, um, well, sort of an involved looking numerator and an involved looking denominator. Remember we talked about those invisible parentheses before. Well, we have some here, right? Invisible parentheses. They will group the numerator. and they will group the denominator. You probably knew this all along, but you just really never thought about it in these terms before. The job of a fraction is to divide the numerator by the denominator, and you can't do that division until you know what the numerator is worth and what the denominator is worth. So we have to figure those things out first. All right, so Let's just see this. Parentheses around the numerator. And parentheses around the denominator. Which set of parentheses should we do first? Well, the correct answer, of course, is the one on the left, but there is really no left here. When you look at a fraction, we say numerator divided by denominator. So we start with the numerator. Wow, this is getting a little sloppy. Sorry about that. So we start with the numerator. We'll simplify the numerator first. When I look at the numerator, I see that we are subtracting and multiplying. What should we do first? Which one has the higher priority level? Yes, multiplication comes before subtraction. So 8 times 2 is 16. So the numerator is really 50 minus 16. And we'll leave the denominator alone for right now. Still working in the numerator. 50 minus 16, that's 34. All right, the numerator is complete. We have simplified it. Now it's time to look at the denominator. Inside of the denominator, there are several things happening. We have squaring of a 6, squaring of a 4, subtracting, and subtracting of a 3. Which one should happen first? Well, exponents come before subtraction. And since we have two sets of exponents, the one on the left. So 6 squared is 36. It's really hard not to rush 
and make more than one change per line. So, you know, hold yourself back. Now we look at that denominator again. Take care of the next exponent. 4 squared is 16. Oops, let me change color here. 16. And then minus 3. All right, now the denominator has a couple of subtractions in it. Which one should we do first? The one on the left. 36 minus 16, well, that's 20. 20 minus 3 is left in the denominator. And 20 minus 3, of course, is 17. Now, right about now, I know you're getting a little frustrated with this because we're taking it so slowly, but honestly, this matters. If you had not done the denominator left to right and said 16 minus 3 is 13 and then 36 minus 13, that would have given us 23, a completely different answer for the denominator. So we really have to be careful not to rush and to take things one step at a time. Finally, we're ready to do the division. Numerator divided by denominator, 34 divided by 17 is 2. Sometimes you see grouping symbols inside of other grouping symbols, parentheses within parentheses. That's okay. We're not going to panic about this. These are called nested parentheses. And whenever you see parentheses inside of parentheses or other grouping symbols inside of other grouping symbols, we start with the inside set first. When you look at this expression, we actually have three sets of parentheses. Right? There is one set of parentheses here on the outside. There is another set of parentheses here on the inside. And there is a third set of parentheses here holding this radicand together. Remember those invisible parentheses we talked about. And of course this makes sense because you can't take the fourth root of something until you know the value of whatever that something is. So the first thing that I'm going to do is just rewrite this because it's a little crowded for me. And I'm going to put that outer set of parentheses in red so that I can keep it uh, visually separated from this inner set of parentheses. So I have 9 times 3 plus, and then in parentheses 20 minus, and this 5 is next to the square root, so they're being multiplied, 5 times the square root of 1.44, close that inner set of parentheses, close that outer set of parentheses, plus the fourth root of 75 plus 6. And now I'm ready to start. Order of operations says I do parentheses first, but there are a lot of them. Uh, this big old set of parentheses here is on the left, so I'm going to start here. And I have parentheses inside of parentheses, so I'm going to start on the very inside. I'm looking at 20 minus 5 times the square root of 144. Should I subtract, multiply, or take the square root first? Well, exponents and roots come before multiplication and subtraction. So the first thing I'm going to do is find the square root of 1.44. So with my calculator, square root 1.44, come out of the square root and press enter and I see that this is 1.2. Now the 5 is being multiplied by the 1.2, so I'm going to hold that in parentheses so that it doesn't look like 51.2, and that reminds me of what the of where the multiplication is. We'll bring the rest of the problem straight down.
All right, so now, gosh, we have parentheses of all sorts of colors. The inside one is green. Should I do anything with this? Is there anything to do inside of this green set of parentheses? No, that's just there to help me remember that I'm multiplying. So now we're looking at 20 minus 5 times 1.2. What should we do first? The multiplication has a higher priority than subtraction. 5 times 1.2 is 6. We'll bring everything else straight down. I like to use these little red arrows here just so that I don't accidentally rewrite the 5 or something like that and uh, put in a number that I've already used. Whoops, forgot my red parenthesis. All right, still working within that inner set of parentheses. Now we have 20 minus 6, which we know is 14. And again, we just rewrite the rest of the line. Gosh, there are a lot of parentheses in this problem still. Anything happening here within the 14? No. So now I have a set of red parentheses and another set of parentheses here underneath the fourth root. Which one should we do first? Yes, the one on the left. So 3 plus 14 is 17. I'm going to keep parentheses around the 17 so I don't forget that it's being multiplied by the 9 plus the fourth root and we bring everything else straight down. All right. Well, right about now is the place where people start making mistakes because we start getting a little antsy and the problem has gotten a little long. And we've been working over here and it's really natural to want to multiply the nine times the 17 next. But it's not time for that yet because as we look at the whole problem, there are still more parentheses to deal with. We need to take care of 75 plus six, which we know is 81. Now we haven't done anything with the fourth root yet, so don't forget to bring it down. And roots come before multiplication. The fourth root of 81, let's see with our calculator, the index is four. The second key will access the general root function. Type in the 81 and see what we get. Ah, three. All right, the fourth root of 81 is three. Bring everything else down. All right, multiplication or addition, which one comes first? Yes, multiplication. And I really don't remember what nine times 17 is and I have this handy dandy calculator here so I'm just going to use it. Nine times 17 is 153. plus three, which of course gives us 156 after we do that. Okay, so could we do this all on our calculator? Of course we could. Let's slide up and give it a try. Ah, let's clear what we had. So let's see, nine times three plus parentheses 20 minus five times the square root of 1.44. Come out of the square root, close the inner parentheses, close the outer parentheses, plus the fourth root of 75. plus six. All right, now I know you're looking at this and you're saying, wait a minute, you put some parentheses here around the 75 and plus the six. Um, honestly, the calculator doesn't need them, but redundant parentheses never hurt anything. If you want to put them in, that's perfectly fine. We can put one in here and these left and right keys 
will allow us to come back and edit what we did before. So second and insert will allow me to put in a left parenthesis. And now it should look pretty nice. As we press enter, oh good, 156, just like we got before. If the answer came out different, then somewhere we made a mistake. And honestly, it's quite likely that you made it when you were working with your calculator. So come back through and scan what you did. If you find that you made a typing error on your calculator, we don't have to go back and redo everything. Watch this. My up arrow key, there's my last answer. Here's my last expression. So I'm going to highlight that and then say, hey, I want to use this again. And it will bring it all right back down for you. And then we can use the left and right arrow keys to edit different parts of it. So if you find yourself working with the same type of formula over and over again and just changing one number inside, you can edit your formula over and over as opposed to typing it back in. All right, nice work today, and uh, good luck on your homework. Remember, one step at a time, take it slowly. We'll talk to you later. Bye-bye.